If you want to give your image compositions a little extra 3D punch, displacement maps are a tool you'll want to learn. Today we'll look at how to use this feature in Affinity Photo, and I'll also show you how it can be used to bring some extra life to your digital mockups. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're learning about displacement maps in Affinity Photo. It sounds a little complicated, but don't worry, it's really easy to learn. And by the end of this video, you'll learn some tricks to make your image compositions look even more realistic. So let me start by showing you an example of how we could use this to put a design on a t-shirt mock-up. And by the way, if you want to download the mock-ups I use in this video, there's a link in the description. They're totally free on my Gumroad. There's 22 PNG files with various t-shirt mock-ups, so you can download it and use it for what you like. But back to my image here, this is actually two different images. Let me turn off this graphic. So there's a t-shirt here and this top graphic. It's just an image I put on and I can move it around. So the blend mode is set to multiply if I set it to normal. It looks like this, but I can put it to multiply to give it a little extra realism. Now, what I also did ahead of time is I created a displacement map for this graphic and I haven't applied it yet. So let me turn it on now and I'll turn it on. And you may have seen it move a little bit. Let me zoom in and show you what it, exactly it did. So if you look at this image where the folds are on the shirt, if I move my graphic around, you can see it's actually moving around the folds of the shirt. So I'll zoom in a little more. Notice this area here. It looks like it's curving around that bend there. And it's happening in other parts of the shirt too. If I move it up and down here, you can see the lines are moving around the folds. Now let me turn off my displacement map. This is what it looks like normally if I move it around. You can see nothing is really changing. It's superimposed on the image, but the dimensions of the shirt aren't having any effect on the design. As I move it around, nothing really happens. And if I turn the displacement map on, you can see it's actually moving around. So let's take a look at how displacement maps actually work. And then we'll come back to this demo and I'll show you how to apply it. So I'm gonna give you some intuition about how displacement maps work. And it's not necessary knowledge, but I think it's good background information to know. So here I've created this simple graphic and you can see it's just black and white stripes. I'm going to call this my displacement map. And above it, what I've done is I've created another layer and I've just created a red stripe here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a displacement map for this red rectangle here. And I'm gonna do that by clicking the live filters here. Now, live filters are non-destructive ways of modifying our image. The old way of creating a displacement map is available through the filters menu here, through distort. And you can do it that way, but it's gonna permanently change your image. So I prefer not to do it that way. So I'm gonna do the live filter method. I'll click this here. And I'm going to click displace. So this menu comes up and the first thing we need to do is we need to load our displacement map. Now I could have it in a separate file or I could just load it from the layer beneath. So I'm gonna load from the layer beneath, which you can see is my black and white grid here. So I'll click load map from layers beneath. And you may have seen this little bit of a jump here. Let me play with the strength slider here and you'll see the effect it's having. So you can see the red stripe is getting pulled in different directions. And the way this placement map works on a general level is that the color white is going to pull your image up and to the left. So if I drag the strength of this, you can see the parts of the stripe that are over the white are being pulled upward. And then the black is going bottom and to the right. And levels of gray would be somewhere in between. Now the actual algorithm has a little more complexity into it, but on a basic level, this is what displacement maps are doing to create some artificial sense of volume in our image. Now you may have noticed these different methods here for the loading method. I usually just use red green offset, although there is this other one about the Sobel filter, but I'm just gonna use red green offset for the rest of this video. Here I have another demo, and for this one, I'll use this gradient as a displacement map. So I have it as a rectangle here. I'll go to my red rectangle. I'll click Live Filters, Displace, and then I'll load from the layer beneath. And once again, as I move the slider, you can see black is being pulled down and white is being pulled up. So this is the effect it's having. You could almost think of this as a slope in a way, the dark area being kind of lower and the white area being higher. And by the way, the cool thing about live filters, as I said before, is they can be toggled on and off. So I'll turn this on and off here. You can see I can just get my original stripe back or I can turn it back on and enable it again. So let's go back to our t-shirt example and I'll show you how to practically use this on your images. So I've gone back to my file here and I've reset everything to the beginning. So I just have this t-shirt background mock-up here. And on top of it, I have a graphic, just normal blend mode, 100% opacity, and we'll start from there. Now there's a couple tips that'll help the displacement map have the best effect. One thing I like to do is change the color profile of my document. So I do that by document, convert format ICC profile. And by default, it will probably be RGB eight for you, but I like to put it to RGB 16. 
And this is just gonna give the displacement map a smoother edge. The edges of the displacements tend to be very pixelated and jagged at a lower bit depth. So I like to put it to 16. So I'll click convert. And you're probably not gonna see much of a difference, but it'll help. So now I could just create the displacement map for this graphic level right away. But something I like to do is modify the image below it a little bit. And I do that non-destructively, of course. And one thing I like to do is add a blur filter to it. So let me hide the graphic for a second. You can see the t-shirt has lots of fine little details in here. A blur filter is just gonna help smooth that out a little bit. Now it's up to you whether or not you wanna use a blur filter or not. I'll show you how to use it and then you can decide if it works in your situation. So once again, that's a live filter. So I'll click live filters here. We have a ton of blurs, but I like the Gaussian blur. And for this image, I'll do about 20 pixels. Maybe I'll do a little bit less here. I kinda just want the rough details to be gone. So now that I look at it, about 10 seems good to me. I'll close it. And again, this is a live filter, so I can turn it on and off. And of course, I'm gonna turn it off later. So let me put the graphic back on. So now I'll create the displacement map for my graphic. So with the graphic layer selected, I'll go to the filters, displace, and then I'll load map from layers beneath. And you can see it jumped a little bit. Let me play with the slider here. I can see I'm getting a good effect here with about 44 pixels. Let's make it 45 just to make it even. And I'll click the X. Now the nice thing is I can move this around and it'll still have an effect wherever it goes. Let's turn off the blur filter now. We don't need it anymore. So let me put the blend mode of my graphic to multiply. I'll change the opacity a bit. Now if I zoom in and move the graphic around, you can see it's conforming to the shirt. It's very obvious in these folds here, but there's also subtle changes in the middle here if I move it around. You can see the text distorting and bending, and I can position it wherever I want. It actually works with the brick too over here, just FYI, because it was using that whole layer as the displacement layer. So when I move it around the brick, you can see it's also changing there. It would also work on her face too, funnily enough. Maybe not useful for this type of art, but that's definitely something that could be useful in the future for your designs. But I'll put it back on the shirt here. Now, one thing that's nice is that masks also work and you can touch up your image a little bit that way. So for example, when I look at this, maybe if I zoom in, maybe it's not quite realistic how that star just goes over this fold here. Like maybe it would actually be hidden behind this fold. So for my graphic, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a mask and I'll just use my paintbrush. And I can just mask part of it out there. So now it looks like it actually is bending around that fold of the shirt a little more realistically. But just remember that if you moved the graphic, you would also have to adjust the mask. Once again, if you want this t-shirt mock-up, be sure to check the link in my description. In addition to this one, there's 21 others. It's a free download and you can play with this example and see how displacement maps work or use them for your own purposes. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.